Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. My name is Ali, and I'm the manager of Enlightens Education. So tonight, I have our senior college admission consultant, Chen, to share with us how to get into the top undergraduate engineering program. Chen received her bachelor and master's degree in economics at UCLA, and she helped students to get into MIT, UPenn, University of Chicago, Carnegie Mellon University, UCLA, UC Berkeley, and more. We also invited our student Ranesh, a sophomore at UC Berkeley, majoring in computer science, to share with us his experience at Berkeley. So before we start the webinar, please let me introduce a little bit about Enlightens and what we do. We are a group of educators who have many years of experience in college admissions consulting and working with families in the Bay Area and beyond. Enlightens Education offers personalized college planning services and strengths-based mentoring approach to identify each student's character, interests, strengths, opportunities, and discover a unique education path to realize their long-term goals. This includes guiding families through the confusing college applications process, course selection, extracurricular activities, summer planning, and test prep. Our offices in Cupertino and Pleasanton are home to our full-time consultants and support staff with an average of eight years of experience. Our years of teamwork also let us offer stability and a high level of synergy. So there are two parts of tonight's webinar. First part is Chen's presentation and student interview. The second part is Q&A. Let me give the stage to Chen and get started. All right, it's been a while since I did my last webinar. We are going to talk about how you can prepare for uh, these majors. Uh, while you're, you're in high school. First, popular fields under engineering. So engineering is one of the most popular majors uh, these years. Uh, the four most popular majors include engineering, computer science, biology, business. Um, so myself like engineering because it's kind of very interesting to me to see how those students can use what they know to solve uh, issues uh, in everyday life. So popular fields, aerospace engineering, bioengineering, chemical engineering, uh, civil engineering, computer engineering, electrical engineering, environmental engineering, and mechanical engineering. So among all these engineering fields, the most competitive ones are double E and then computer engineering and also actually computer science. So depending on how the school structure their departments and majors, some computer science majors are also under uh, the Department of Engineering, but some schools like Berkeley, they put computer science under letters and science. It really depends. Okay, so the three majors uh, we are going to go over today is first, electrical engineering, which focuses on robotics, control system, remote sensing, wireless network. A lot of hardware is out there. Computer engineering is more about software, architecture, hardware design. There's some hardware and you also have to know some programming. Computer science is basically all about coding. Later on, Ranesh will share what he observes at Berkeley about the difference between computer engineering and computer science. These are some of the top EECS slash CE programs. MIT is the king <laughs> in this area. Uh, and then Stanford, UC Berkeley, CMU, UIUC, Georgia Tech, U Michigan, Princeton, Caltech, Cornell, UT Austin. Among all these schools, I would say UT Austin is, um, well, 90% of their students are from Texas, they're Texas residents. So it's very competitive for out-of-state students. So if a student is interested in UT Austin, do not just look at their average admission stats. Top computer science programs, these are slightly different from uh, the top engineering programs, but still MIT is the top one. <laughs> uh, and then CMU, we know that CMU's computer science is very hard to get in. Uh, UC Berkeley, uh, Georgia Tech, Stanford, UIUC, uh, Michigan, UT Austin, Cornell, and Purdue. So today, uh, the first schools we're going to go over is MIT, the ceiling, the top one. I would say if you want to go to MIT and you do whatever you can to pursue this path, if you can handle it, 
you have no issues with our other schools. <laughs> but it's not guaranteed you can get in. So this is a note from MIT admission office. If you apply to MIT, it's actually undeclared. It's like the general admission into MIT. At the end of first year, or sometimes after your first semester, you can declare your major. At MIT, based on my reading, my research, I, uh, I think it's not that hard to change majors. However, it's just very hard to get in. <laughs> so MIT ECS, MIT has this department of ECS. There are six courses here. Three of them are housed completely within the department. Six one, six two, and six three, uh, which are uh, EE, ECS, and kind of CS. Uh, we're going to go over the flow chart of their curriculum as well. So join the programs with another uh, department for students who have multiple interests. I know that there are a lot, of, a lot of kids who are interested in the computer, but they will also like life science or math or business, uh, finance. The department also offers other options. 6-7 focus on CS and biology. 6-9 focus on computer and cognition. And 6-14 is a joint program between CS, economics, and the data science. As people will say, economics are you kidding me but actually in the advanced economics you are supposed to know a lot of math and you will need some programming skills to handle the data analysis the flow chart for 61 62 and 63 three majors housed within the eecs department 61 is electrical uh, science and engineering it studies circuit device materials and tech communication. 6.2 is the most popular EECS, uh, right? Uh, just like Berkeley, the most uh, competitive, most popular majors. Uh, EECS is a joint study of both hardware and software. So you can see, uh, actually, you are supposed to take a lot of classes uh, if you are in 6.2. 6.3 is computer science and engineering, and actually this option focuses more on the computer science part. So more coding, more software design and computer system. There is actually a hidden message in these three flow charts. Notice that the intro level subject, the math class is actually differential equation. Uh, differential equation is like, we know the math sequence uh, is algebra two, pre-calc, and then AP calc AB, and then BC, and then multivariable, linear algebra, and then differential equation, okay? Some people will say, um, what classes I really should take in high school? Uh, is BC enough? I would say for most high school students or for most engineering majors, BC is enough. But if your goal is schools like MIT or Caltech, ideally you can actually have a more advanced level of math such as linear algebra and differential equation. Now you can see how challenging this curriculum is. So MIT, how they select students. These are four objectives from MIT's uh, X department. These are what they are looking for in the students. First, engineering ethos, which means, do you have the mindset that you want to solve problems with technology? Okay, you must be technical oriented. And second, leadership. You can have like perfect GPA, perfect tech scores, but do you know how to work with others? Do you have the sense of teamwork? Are you a good leader? Can you run a startup after you graduate? That's a point. And the third one is versatility. That means it's not just about engineering. There are a lot of things a high school student should be interested in, okay? and show your creativity and engagement. So you are an engineer. Uh, you're supposed to know a lot of stuff, physics, math, those funky functions, graphs. Uh, but at the same time, do you know how to use your skill to benefit the community? Are you involved in your community? Are you trying to make your, uh, your, your, your community a better place? Right? Uh, it sounds shallow, but it's, it is what they're looking for. 
UC Berkeley. I really like UC Berkeley because I think it's one of the most cost-efficient schools. I talked to Ranish and he was like, yeah, based on the tuition and the quality of the program, it's worth it. <laughs> it might be the best place for most kids. So UC Berkeley is a little bit different from MIT. They have their own X department. Their CS program, the computer science major, is offered by letters and the science. But for both degrees, uh, their major courses are all offered by the X department. Okay, but the general education requirements are different for these two majors. This is from Berkeley's website. X itself is very, very deeply involved in physics. Okay, a lot of physics. Um, CS, not so much. Later on, Ranish will go over this for us. Uh, CS is more about, you know, a programming language, database, AI, uh, computation, logic. Okay, one note here. For Berkeley, again, it's different with MIT. If you are interested in any major under engineering, you are supposed to apply to the major you're interested in, okay? Outside engineering, it's admission by school, but in the engineering, you are supposed to do the major, okay? So these are uh, some differences between engineering uh, and CS. I think for high schoolers, first you need to understand the admission, okay? Uh, apply to the major you want. But for CS, it's actually you're admitted by the Letters in the Science, School of Letters and Science, and then, and then you declare your major after the first year. For high schoolers, make sure you understand the different expectations of these two majors. One is very heavy in science, physics, the other one, it combines computer science and the liberal studies. Okay, this is a question I got from all the parents and students. If I go to history or some humanity majors that are not so popular at Berkeley, is it possible for me to transfer to uh, engineering? Theoretically, yes, but in reality, no. From the department website, it's rare for students to transfer to ECS. Theoretically, if you want to transfer to CS, ECS, you have to first finish the lower division requirement. And here, the three phases is how you select classes at Berkeley. First stage is all the spots are reserved for the first year ECS students and engineering students. And the second batch is the freshmen, other freshmen. And the third batch is for other students, okay? So it's very hard to get into those classes. Even though you can get into those classes, you have a high GPA, still, whether you can transfer to ECS or not, depends on the capacity of the major, okay? But usually, ECS is packed. The next one, our last school, UIUC, uh, very popular as well. It's different from Berkeley, but similar with MIT. Uh, the three majors, EE, CE, and CS, uh, they are all under the Department of Engineering. Actually, UIUC offers a minor in Computer Engineering and Computer Science, but no minor in uh, Electrical Engineering. I suppose it was because the requirements was too high. So what you are supposed to do with these three majors are, uh, are the same with, other, same with other schools, but make sure you understand these differences because this is very important for students who are applying to UIUC. UIUC has their own essays. The UIUC essays, you are supposed to uh, write about your interest in the major and your previous experiences. If you can match your experience uh, with the major in your essays, uh, it's very important. So you cannot just write about your coding experience for engineering major. If you are doing a second choice major, you're going to write another essay, additional essay. So make sure you really understand the difference between E, C, and CS. There's another thing I want to emphasize for uh, UIUC is, again, transferring to engineering majors. Um, this is very different from Berkeley. They do have a specific program for undergraduate students who are not engineering, but interested in transferring to engineering, okay? This prep program is for students who don't get, get into their engineering major. 
that also implies when you apply to UIUC, but you feel, oh, UIUC is my reach school. I probably cannot get into engineering, even though I put engineering as my first choice. For the second choice, you can find something less competitive, but that will allow you to get into the school first. And then you try to sign up for this program, uh, which will help you transfer to uh, the major you want. For the prep program, you're not supposed to get these in any technical courses, like computer science, uh, engineering, physics, math. Okay, they do have a very high standard for, for students who want to transfer to engineering. Um, internal transfer uh, is much easier. You need an engineering portfolio, including the classes you take in the first or first two years, and you have to talk to a uh, counselor, and you have to submit an application. No GPA requirements, I was surprised at that, but that's uh, what they do. But it also depends on the capacity of the major. Okay, compared to Berkeley, I think transferring at UIUC is much, much easier. We're done with our uh, three schools, and now we're going to go over how you can prepare for these majors. First, academics, okay, your classes you will try to take <laughs> during high school. First, calculus, for sure, engineering, uh, computer science. For both fields, you are, you are, you're supposed to have uh, no high level, advanced level of math. Calculus BC is the basic. And as we just mentioned, ideally you can also have multivariable calc, linear algebra, differential equation, if your goal is MIT, okay, or Caltech, or CMU, Berkeley, well, it will help you a lot, okay. Uh, AP physics, mechanics. Yeah, a lot of colleges accept AP credits. At some colleges, you can use your AP scores to, you know, waive some lower division classes, but actually for the best programs, they have very tough policy, and a lot of programs, they only accept AP physics. Okay, one and the two don't count. Tests, requirement, SAT, ACT, high score, uh, well, I would just skip that part. Uh, SAT 2. Make sure you know the difference between required, recommended, considered, not required. A big change in MIT admission is starting this admission cycle. Uh, MIT removed their requirement for SAT 2. They used to require two, one math and one science. Um, starting this year, they're not requiring any uh, SAT 2 subject test anymore, and actually, they don't even consider your SAT 2 subject test. If you submit your score, they're not going to look at it. UC at Berkeley is still recommended. Well, we know that recommended means, you know, you know a lot of students will submit it. I, I tell my student, if you want to go to Berkeley and something is recommended, it's kind of required. Not required, like UIUC, they never required SAT 2 subject test. If you submit, they're not going to look at your subject test. It's not going to show up. So if you are going to do some subject test, what subjects you're going to take? Math 2, uh, for sure. Math 1 is not accepted by colleges. Uh, science, preferably physics, especially if you're doing uh, engineering. But if you're doing uh, computer science, actually you can consider chemistry or biology, uh, depending on your strength. APs. Okay, so APs at most colleges, you can use your AP scores, as I just mentioned, but one note for MIT, if you want to use your AP score, like AP Calc, uh, BC, a lot of students got into MIT, actually they, they do have this Calc BC, but if you want to you skip some lower division classes uh, using your AP, AP score, you are also supposed to take a placement test at MIT after, after you, uh, get there. Activities. These are things we're all interested in. Um, volunteering is very important. Again, it shows your commitment to your community. Programming languages, Ranish, our guest speaker, he started learning programming in eighth grade. He started with Java and student clubs, organizations. There are a lot of robotics clubs in high schools, but based on my knowledge, 
many of these clubs are not very active. Um, so sometimes you can probably consider some outside organizations. Uh, independent projects is very important because engineering and computer science are very hands-on. Okay, um, so your independent projects shows your creativity. Okay, and your knowledge, how you utilize your knowledge. And finally, build your engineering portfolio. Your engineering portfolio should be your project. Starting from your very first project, uh, you should find some way to you know keep a record. Uh, why this is important? Because besides MIT, a lot of private schools allow students to submit portfolios. Okay, this is not just something for art or music students. It's for everybody. Okay, so music and art. Well, if you have these interests and you are uh, very into your interests, I would say keep it if you have time. It will be a very great additive to your application. Okay, so this is just something to show our first step uh, working with students. This actually is, is something I made for seniors. Well, it also applies to younger kids. So when we get the students, we do a um, first step is to do an intake. We assess your high school, your academic uh, strengths and weakness, your activities, uh, your interest, your uh, preference. What's important here, I would say academics, in addition to high GPA, we also want students to have uh, major related classes. Uh, activities is something I spend a lot of time with the students uh, because it's one thing that allows you stand out. Especially right now, a lot of schools switch to test optional. Uh, so your activities is what makes your shrine. Well, interest, I would say, for some students who have no directions, we do have to do some assessment, uh, personality assessment, interest assessment for, for students uh, to help them and help us understand the students better. All right, next we will have a short interview with Renish. Hi, Renish. Hi. Thank you for coming to our webinar. Do you want to introduce yourself to our audience? Oh yeah, sure. So my name is Ranesh. I'm a rising sophomore at UC Berkeley studying computer science. I think I'll declare by the end of this month. And uh, I'm a Cupertino High School alumni. So if anyone is from Cupertino, then hi. I have been interested in computer science ever since I started learning it in eighth grade and throughout high school as well as in college. That's always been my Passion. I am also interested in speech and debate, and uh, yeah, follow a lot of news, politics, stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. So Ramesh uh, started working with me in eleventh grade, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> when he came to me, I just realized, oh my God, you you have so many APs and <laughs> so many tests waiting for you. <laughs> And we still have to work on a lot of activities. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so talk about your college life. How many classes are you taking right now? Uh, do you still have time for your personal life and activities at Berkeley? Um, I'm taking like in a normal fall, spring semester, I take four classes each semester. So for me, that would be uh, two technical classes and then uh, two breadth classes the technical classes are the classes that you basically do your, for your major for me that would be taking cs or ee classes and then breadth classes are like those seven additional requirements uh for college of letters and science like arts humanities biology like stuff like that so um those so like taking two technicals and two breadth is like a pretty manageable course load for me. I think that's 15 to 16 units each semester. And in terms of workload, I think it's more than high school, but it's manageable. Like you can't procrastinate and like expect to catch up later on. Like you have to keep on task. And you do have, um, from my experience, I did have some free time, but I didn't have like a whole lot, you know, like I couldn't like, go out to SF and like just like visit places like I had free time to watch like uh Netflix or talk with friends hang out with them but like yeah like 
I saw all my friends like going out to all these places. I'm like, how do you even have time for that? But like, you do have some breathing space and you obviously can get eight hours of sleep, uh, you know, do your normal routine. But yeah, I would say majority of your time would be like just like keeping up and studying for your classes. Yeah. Okay. I had friends graduated from Berkeley. They told me there are like huge classes at Berkeley. Well, at, back in UCLA, the largest class I took was like 400 uh, kids in the class. So what was the largest class you took at Berkeley? How did you survive? Uh, uh, so I took a CS61A, that first class, if anyone's familiar. Like it has 2,000 people in it, not 200, 2,000. And uh, yeah, so first week of, like in the first week of the class, we had like, you know how we have like those auditoriums, like where they have plays and stuff like that. The whole auditorium was filled. And I don't know if anyone has seen like those pictures of Berkeley with like professor with a microphone and then just like both the lower level and the upper level of seats like completely filled. That's 61, CS61A. So like after a week, like they didn't have the auditorium, they had to go back to normal lecture room, which obviously can't fit 2000 kids. So what they did was they had YouTube tutorials, like it's basically the same content that's covered in lecture, but like they have like, cert, like for each, le each lecture, they have like eight short YouTube clips that goes over each topic. And it's like very concise and very effective. So like I would usually just be in my dorm and like, whenever the lectures happen, I would just like watch those pre-recorded YouTube videos. So that was like really beneficial for me because like I could always like double speed if I was in a time crunch or like if I didn't understand something, I could always like rewind and like, you know, rewatch that to like get better grasp of content. And also besides the lecture, you have a um, lot of discussion sections led by graduate students and like uh, TAs. So uh actually the attendance to discussion section is mandatory not to lecture that's why i could do the lecture on the videos but for discussion sections they actually make you go to those and in those sections they take the content that's covered from the lecture they go in more detail like they give you more problems to solve and they really show you how much deeper those concepts go so like that way you learn the concepts better ETAs and graduate students from my experience are phenomenal sometimes even better than the instructors at times but yeah they're like really great they're they know their topic they know their topic inside out and for me uh, the discussion sections really really help solidify my understanding of the class okay so TAs uh, really play a very crucial role in the learning experience you know yeah. Huge public high, uh, school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I think uh, at Berkeley, you probably have a lot of classes uh, with students from uh, engineering, right? Mm -hmm. uh, EECS. So based on your observation, uh, what are some major differences between uh, ECS and CS? Okay. So at Berkeley, uh, one major observation is that all the EECS kids have to take multivar and the, uh, physics, I think physics 7A or something like that, but they have to, it's like very geared towards physics and multivar. And they also have to take a lot of upper division EE classes. Uh, luckily for us, we just need to take two intro level EE classes. Like, but when I say intro, they're like hard, but still like two lower division. <laughs> intro EE cl classes. Um, so like for us, we could, uh, what we could do is take those EE classes and then for the rest of our um, degree requirement, we could just like take all the CS classes that all the EE kids could once we declare like all the upper division classes. And uh, for us, instead of taking all these like um, super, um, all these like upper division EE classes, we basically have to take more of these breadth classes and that's where our units come in. So I would say, yeah, EE, CS kids have a lot more requirement of taking physics, more upper division EE classes, whereas us CS kids could just focus. We have the space of focusing more on the CS class. 
I see. Okay, so back to your high school experience. What are some most challenging things、uh, during high school, and how did you work with your consultant <laughs> throughout this process? Oh yeah,、uh, one of the most challenging things in high school was that well, I knew to, I knew I wanted to go into computer science. I also had developed some like Android apps, like and like some personal projects, but I didn't really have that structure, you know, of like. Doing summer programs, or like where to volunteer, or like basically how to build up a cohesive like resume, sort of like、uh, before the college application starts. How do like sell myself as a potential candidate? Because like for me, before I met you, like there was like very little organization as to like what extracurriculars I should do and stuff like that. What you really helped me with before, like the application. Season started was like getting those resources to do all these extracurriculars. Yeah, so I have two key examples. One of them was、uh, Blue Stamp Engineering. If you guys have heard of it, and、um, and in that that program was really beneficial because it allowed me to develop this Alexa prototype where I built like、um, this Alexa device which could control the electricity budget of your house. It would basically monitor. The electricity consumption of everything, and then it would、uh, like report analytics, shut off your device、uh, at any time when the when your budget passes. So that engineering program was like really beneficial, and I even use that project till this day. Whenever I'm like applying for like internships or like positions or in clubs or stuff like that. The other example, another key example was、um, OSF. Of、where I volunteered, which is a organization of special needs families. This is where kids who are special needs, it's basically daycare for them. And like volunteering there was like give me a whole new insight as to like there's like this other group of people who need my help, you know. So I think those were the two key resources that you helped me with, among many more other resources, like、uh, you know, telling me where to apply for.、Um, Summer programs like from Cosmos to like all these other summer programs. So like that wealth of resources really gave me a structure and clarity of like before heading into the application season. Once we got to the application season, you really helped me organize、uh, my application. Like you know what goes where, how to like write your essays to like portray this quality、um, to the admission officers or like.、Um, Or like,、uh, yeah, basically that, and how to list your extracurriculars so that you can convincingly communicate your skills. You can show them your well-rounded personality, and even like very specific details, like in which order to list your extracurricular activities, what to say, what not to say, how how to basically present yourself to the admission officers, because like you could. Have like all you could like do all these things in the world, but like if you don't present yourself in the right way, then like it's not it won't add up to anything, right? So that was really crucial. Also, like editing essays with like adding more depth to my essay, like how to make it more profound and、uh, yeah, basically all those resources were really crucial in to develop.、Uh, that helped me develop my application. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so my last question is: I remember when you came to me, you had you had done some projects already, some coding coding、uh, projects. To、uh, so、tell us how your ideas and、uh, if you have any suggestions for the younger kids, please please share with us. Oh yeah, first of all, like,、um, I mean, if you're if you want to go into computer science, then like learn coding as soon as you can because like. In my opinion, computer science, as compared to bio or like some other STEM、um, career path, computer science, in my opinion, has a very low barrier of entry. Like anyone can learn coding. I learned coding at the end of eighth grade. My sister is going into eighth grade and she's learning Python right now. So like, really, anyone can learn coding. And once you do that, I would say before you apply for internships or you apply for summer projects or research or whatever. I would say develop a lot of personal projects because the good thing about CS 
as compared to bio where you have to be in a lab setting you have to do a supervised research is that you could do a lot of really interesting projects on your own like um and what i found helpful in this journey was uh building android apps since i learned uh java beforehand and when building these apps i um i basically use my personal experience to develop these uh products like for example i developed i developed this prototype which helped people um which helped people find resources in the after aftermath of hurricane disaster and this stemmed from my experience of being in a hurricane hurricane sandy in 2012 back then i used to live in new york so i feel like having those personal experiences really guiding you towards like what projects you should build not only is that good for like idea creation and product creation it helps with your college applications later down in life like you could say that hey this is my personality like say if you are interested in music so you build an app that like provides free online courses or if you are interested in sports then you build some computer program that calculates all these statistics for like basketball or something so you could really uh, do these personal projects where computer science can help you really elevate your um personal interests and like really give it a new dimension and after that once you have experience in obviously applying for um research summer internships which give you gives you more solidity in terms of like you know having these like formal internships is also necessary but besides that i would say also have some like non technical related extracurriculars like speech and debate or volunteering and like you know just like have this like whole well rounded list of activities that's all my questions i but i think our audience has some questions yes so i collect some questions for both of you so first question for applying engineer major other than sat subject test physics and math too should i take one humanity sat subject test or chance uh, i would say if it doesn't take you too much time to prepare uh take it it will help you especially when you apply to some primary schools and very selective schools but remember if it doesn't take you too much time to prepare otherwise it's not worth it yeah all right it will make the student look more well rounded right yeah okay uh next question uh there's a parent to ask what's your advice to a ninth grader who is targeting um engineering major for college chen first you have to make sure his or her interest is engineering interest is very important uh if he he or she is very interested uh starting i was starting from learning some basic programming language uh right ranesh what do you think uh, yeah i think that's uh that's uh that's good advice i would also like to add on that like when you are trying to discover your interest whether it be engineering all that i think one crucial way of doing that is joining different student organizations in your high school like you could try out different things like from speech and debate to like coding club to like sports or whatever and like really try to find like what's your niche you know like what you're good at so like when you go into your sophomore year you stick with those few clubs that you're really good at and like try to get an officer position or something like that so i would say yeah in ninth grade basically trying to find your interest go to like like go join student organizations and like explore what you're really interested in so like heading into sophomore year you are you have already sorted that out maybe you have some officer positions and if not you're like going head into like what you really want to do best like in those student organizations or like to volunteer or something like that so yeah okay all right the good advice is there's a student asks is it difficult to get into good colleges from monta vista high uh, high school as it is super competitive where did your other classmates go he's not monta vista i need to the first question and uh, arnish can answer the second questions where his classmates go a lot of my classmates actually i would say if you're in the top of uh brick uh, sorry a uh, coop you know high school monta vista lynn brooker like i mean i'm familiar with fu hsd high school district 
I don't know about other schools, but yeah, at least for that district, if you are, I, I would say if you are top 30 students and if you're applying letters and science to Berkeley, then it's not that hard to get into. Of course, I've heard this year there were like some uh, stuff going on with the admission officers where they wanted to take students from um, like other places. But I would say this year, or like at least my year, those schools were like sending more kids than a high school would typically send to like Berkeley or UCLA. So as for my classmates, um, I, a lot of them are in Berkeley. So I already have like a good friend circle there. But my best friend goes to University of Michigan. I know a lot of people, a lot of people who are going to UIUC for engineering. And uh, Purdue is also a pretty good option. Like a lot of my friends are going to Purdue as well. And I think besides those colleges, UC Irvine was a pretty popular <laughs> UC in my eyes. So like, yeah, a lot of people went to UC Irvine. So. I would say, yeah, those, um, UIUC, Purdue, um, some of my friends, I would say that's basically it. Maybe uh, here, uh, one or two went to UC Davis, San Diego, and uh, ASU. So based on where they end up with, actually, most of them are studying engineering, computer science. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. Uh, I've like, I've, I, my best friend wanted to do bioengineering and then he switched uh, into CS while he was in Michigan. Cause I think it's easy to switch. And he's like, yeah, CS, like, uh, I mean, uh, he said it's much easier in terms of getting opportunities and stuff like that. So yeah. So only one friend who's pursuing bio at this point, okay. like he wants to go in, he wants to be a doctor or something. Yeah. yeah. Now the CS is more. Uh, practical <laughs> yeah yeah okay 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 time's running out we only have enough time to answer two more questions okay Chen is it difficult to get into good colleges from Monta Vista High School as it's super competitive uh, based on what I heard uh, this year's uh, results are not that good the number of students who got into Berkeley from Monta Vista was not very high. There might be something uh, going on uh, with UC admission. They probably prefer some other high schools. It's possible uh, based on our research. So we did some research about these uh, high schools uh, feeder rate at UC. But I think just to be yourself and do the best you can, there are a lot of schools you can pick from, right? Make sure you still have good grades uh, and good activities. Uh, to show your personality, to show your strengths, to show your interests. Right, right. Mm -hmm. The better you are, the more materials we will have to work with. So you will have a better chance when you choose colleges. Okay, next question, the last one. And hello, do colleges look at AP courses, uh, AP course grades at school or the actual AP test scores from College Board in May? Which courses are more important? Okay, so they are actually two different things. Uh, I think we went over AP stuff in, in our previous webinar. The grades from your AP classes will affect your overall GPA, right? But if you want to um, uh, skip some classes uh, and earn some college credit uh, through APs, depending on the college, you will have to use your AP results. I, I mean, the result of your AP exams. Uh, like some colleges, the top colleges like Harvard, MIT, they only accept score five, okay? Uh, but schools like uh, Berkeley Engineering, they accept a four and five. And some schools uh, for a lot of like history, humanities, social science classes, uh, three is also accepted. So it really depends on the school. Uh, but if you want to skip some college classes, then you have to use your AP test score. Okay, so AP grades, I mean, the grades from your AP classes uh, don't count. I see. Okay. All right. Um, this is all for tonight's webinar. Uh, thank you for sharing, Chen. And uh, thank you, Renish.
for sharing. And for parents who have more questions and willing to uh, uh, interested in know more about uh, our services, or if you have more questions about uh, how to uh, planning for high school years, feel free to contact us. We can be reached by phone, by uh, email, or uh, you can scan my WeChat ID um, to join our WeChat group.